माता जी गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन लेस बोट आउन टू श्री माता जी रेज अवर मदर कुंडलिनी एंड पुट बंदर श्री गणेश मंत्र Let us listen to Shamataji's speech, which is continuation of yesterday's speech. So do not be dominated by luxuries and comforts. I do not mean to say that you are necessarily tortured about it. That's not the point at all. Because I must use a balancing point always. But do not pamper your body that it becomes a hurdle for your parents. Keep your body clean. Respect your body. And it will be very happy when it will know that you have used it for the divine purpose. There's a an indian word for which we call it a baitha yeah i don't know there's no english equal to that but baitha means the power to sit that's the gravity how long can you sit in one posture what is your baitha like uh, any studies or anything they ask what is your baitha have you got the baitha is a power to be seated on one point How long can you sit continuously? That is how you judge your gravity. Unless and until you have a bite, you cannot be a guru. So the body is to be brought round properly. It has to be separate. It's no question of becoming thin or fat, but the body should be such. that you should be able to use it for your purpose as a good sometimes you will find you can't sleep on the ground when you sleep on the ground three four days your body will be very happy it will pain one or two days it will be but do not insult your body 
this is the other side of discipline. We don't take our path, we don't keep ourselves all right. So we are insulting our body. Look after it. We may have to uh, look after its softness, the gentleness of the body. Treat it with respect. By becoming barbaric, you are insulting your body. <coughs> body is very important. This is made of five elements and all these five elements within us as gurus have to be sparkling. I can go on like this, but now you think about it in the future. What have you to do with your body? How you are going to use five elements within your body to cleanse them, make them beautiful, so that your light sparkles. The gravity comes to you in your body this way, that you start generating your power or your principle of guru principle of your mastery, through this point of your gravity. The second point is your attention should have that gravity. Your attention is very important. A person who is easily disturbed is not a deep person or easily taken to something like, say, emotions or easily to some others say intellectual pursuit. As gurus there will be temptations for you. People will be challenging absolutely. A person comes out with a very big intellectual feat or something like that. Then immediately you'll feel challenged about it and then you say, all right, let me handle the situation. Handle it at the third yoga point, on your gravity. Just sit down on your gravity and see if it's there. Immediately you will know how to handle the situation. You need not talk to that person, you will handle the situation all that. Not on intellectual level, but on your gravity. If the attention has the gravity, it pulls down the ego and the super-ego of other people. Then you will not be frustrated or frantic. Also, if you can start from outside, it may work out in human beings. It works out. Like study your behavior, how you behave towards others. Or study your attention, how it behaves towards outside. What attracts your attention? What attracts your attention? Study your attention. By that study, you will be able to fix your attention in its mariyada, in its boundaries. Once you put the boundaries to the attention, then the death starts developing. The person who has no boundaries can never have death, he will be spreading just like that, all through. No death at all. So you have to put boundaries by understanding your attention. That no, not more than that. All right, not more than that. Like some people in Sahaja Yogas, they get interested in a patient. Then for them that patient becomes important. Or get interested in some person that he must get realization. Say, my mother, my father, my, my, whole thing. And all the time they are talking about my jobs, my clothes, some sort of a my. 
and they don't know how to draw the line. You must know where to draw the line is Mariana. Otherwise the whole thing will fritter away. You will become a frivolous person. There won't be any gravity. So you must know how far to go with a person when you are dealing as a guru. Then you are a master. But if you do not know where to draw the line, you may be crossing the line and getting into his clutches. So the best way is to handle the situation is to get into thoughtless awareness. Again and again and again and again. And you establish that clearly. And some of them do complain to me that it's not an easy thing to do. It's the easiest thing to do. If you give up all other <coughs> useless things that you are doing. And then gravity will give you the wisdom to do the right thing at the right time. Ashram is a place where one has to learn to be a good. But I find it is a, not always a good experiment. Once they have an ashram, they take it for granted. They think this is a place for us to nicely come and live and some people will work, some will be enjoy, some will pay, some will not pay. It's most right? You must immediately find out a person who really has the spiritual authority and try to follow that. <coughs> Instead of that, we try to mix up with people who are of a lower spiritual authority. And he sleeps till nine o'clock, everybody sleeps in an ashram. Nobody should sleep after six o'clock. It's an absolute thing. Absurd. You must sleep early, get up early. Otherwise you can stay outside. You all must get up at six o'clock. You know what time your mother gets up. And what I find, nobody is up here. In India they all get up. Very early. But I find nobody is up here. My attention is always there. And you don't realize that how important all these things are. This is a training time for you. For this you are born, you have been seeking this for ages now, you've got it now, you must discipline yourself. But I've seen in ashramas where people pay a big amount, they get up at six, four o'clock, three o'clock. Because in Sahaja Yoga everything has to come from you. This is the style it is. At the most I can ask people who are not all right to go out for a while, live outside and then join us. That helps some. But not more than that, because I am also a mother though I am a girl. It is you who should mature yourself, will mature much faster than I force things on you. Finding fault with others but not with yourself. Must have a discipline, a time in the morning to get up, to do a little puja or something. At least spend half an hour, all of you together, you should be ready by 6 or 6.30. Sit down, do meditation. I have to lay down rules for you now because you do not want to lay down. I'm also amazed that many people do not know even my arti after so many years by heart. That is what Sahaja Yoga is because it's a Mahamaya. So 
So you have to learn it yourself. You have to do it yourself. It's easy to talk about Sahaja Yoga. Very simple. Stand up and talk because they, you have heard from your mother. You talk. We, have, we will have no impression on another person. It will fritter away. Because must come from your center of gravity. This is the greatest thing you can do to yourself, is to discipline yourself fully and compete in disciplining yourself and make your body all right, your attention correct. Attention is corrected by many ways. As I said, watch your attention, where does it go? <clears throat> now, what else are we going to talk but Sahaja Yoga? Is there anything more uh, beautiful or more interesting, more manifesting than Sahaja Yoga is? And what is the job of a guru? is nothing but to expose the Parabrahma itself, the whole working of the Divine. That is the job of a guru. To expose the complete working of the Parabrahma is the job of a guru in the modern time, not only raising the Kundalini. But after raising the Kundalini, you should be able to tell all about the Divine powers and everything. For that you have to learn. You have to read, you have to understand. Do you understand now the difference between the old gurus and modern gurus? Because they were brought up with such tremendous dis discipline and hardly one or two used to be made gurus. They went through such studies and such interrogations and examination and tests and by the time they were seventy-five or so, they became gurus. But we have to do it quick, and the best way is to do it yourself. Perhaps the tradition of the Western countries do not give you much uh, impetus for discipline. That's called as cutting up. But a disciplined person is the only one who can be a Sahaja. Spontaneity works best in a disciplined person. <coughs> disciplined person is the one who knows the technique and the energy is the spontaneity. But a person who is frittered away, what will spontaneity do with it? It cannot work it out. The instrument is so hard. So you discipline yourself so that others will be disciplined by your behavior. Once you have disciplined yourself, when you become a guru, you have certain privileges as master. And uh, it is used as a weapon by many masters before, between you need not use, I am just telling you as a side issue, is a temp. All the gurus had tremendous temp. That's expected. Yeah. Like I would tell you about Alauddin Khasa, uh, who was a great musician, was the master of Ravi Shankar and all these and my father was the political advisor to this uh, Maharaj of Maya. And uh, we went down there, I was there also. That time Ravi Shankar was an <coughs> artist who was playing a little bit here and there, sort of thing. I mean, he was quite a good artist still. So, this Guru had a great respect for my father, sort of he used to treat my father with very good reference. So, he was playing something. He was very good at Mudang. So he played the Mudanga for <coughs> my father. 
saying that the 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 lehra is the tune one has to play. It's a simple tune, just to play for the udangam to be played on that. So my father asked Ravi Shankar to play. He didn't say anything. And at the slightest, they will take a bass and hit you. See, so people used to be very careful <laughs> if they were sitting near the stones. The people would stay away from them. They would throw stones. They'll keep a chimta, big chimta like this. Anybody coming near them, they would hit them. At the slightest thing, they give a chimta to a disciple. This was a long thing, you know, made out of iron. And a chimta is a double prong thing. And they would hit the person, thumb like. That. It was the situation before I came in here. As you know, guru, you see, it's difficult to be a guru and a mother. I cannot do both things together. But that was the situation. Even those great artists today who are playing great things like uh, you hear now, Vilayat Khan Sahib, you go and ask him about his guru. How much time he was beaten? Absolutely beaten. Any swara they did wrong was absolute chastity, absolute uh, discipline. If the guru said five o'clock tomorrow, even if guru comes or not, five o'clock you have to be there. For any art, in the Indian style was like that, complete discipline. Without discipline, not even education was important. Terrible taskmasters, and that's what they used, which you need not use in Sahaja. There is no need to use temper in Sahaja Yoga. <coughs> There is, because I have not given you, imparted any knowledge to you with temper. Perhaps there could be hardly anyone who has seen me in a temper. So that is not the way we Sahaja Yogis are going to impart knowledge to others. We have to be very mild and sweet because in the pattern of your own Guru, because she is sweet, she is very mild and she is very persuasive and kind. In the same way you have to be. Because that pattern you haven't learned. That's why don't take to that kind of a pattern where people are in a big temper and they come out with a big temper. It doesn't behove a Sahaja Yogi to be like that. I mean they had such tremendous powers also that they could just make somebody into ashes. See, with such a temper they lived. And uh, they had one guru uh, somewhere, like a, I call it rock of Jibra, <laughs> that you take him and you hit your head. At least once or twice you must have a good hitting from him, otherwise he is not your guru. That was the system. Now we have a great artist sitting here. We must be also remembering his, uh, his guru, who must have really beaten him nicely before he imparted knowledge. They said, without you hit and uh, chisel, you cannot make a good disciple. And this time you are going to challenge that and to prove that our mother was extremely kind and still we are chiseled out beautifully by your own chisel. That's why I request you to do it yourself because I cannot do it as a mother. And that's why it is your responsibility. Do it that way. Today is a day where we all have to decide that we are going to be Guru Sahib. I am going to retire as a Guru. It's all right to be a mother with your people. Now you have to be gurus of other people and for that you must know what you should achieve. You have all the powers within you, you can manifest them also. But you cannot have a following unless and until you become a guru. This is the only difference. If you want to have a following, then you must chisel out yourself in that fashion that as soon as people see you should say, here, here is somebody with that gravity. 
I think that should be sufficient for today. Puja. Only thing, the last, most important thing is that you cannot make a drama out of it. It has to be a reality. See, by standing like a big imposing person, you do not become that. On the contrary, people may think you are mad. It should be from within that you should develop that dignity within yourself, that poise, that balance, that understanding within yourself. a kindly pause, voice, a beautiful personality, benevolent, but standing above everyone else by its gravity, depth, gentlemanliness, generosity, proper bearing, meekness, cleanliness, above all, love, <coughs> heart like an ocean, most forgiving. I'm sure next year we'll have some gurus here who have already got some disciples around.
Mataji for this collective morning meditation. Thank you for this thoughtless state. Jai Shri Let's bow down to Shri Mataji, raise our mother Kundalini and put Bandha.
let us join again tomorrow same time jai shri mat